Morning, good afternoon, good evening. Sim Race and RC fans, Racing 393. So this is gonna be part three of my Hotshot 2 Blockhead Motors build. Now, I will link the other two videos in the description, uh, part one and part two. Uh, for part three, as you can see, I've sort of scooted ahead a little bit here. There wasn't much to do. Uh, I think when you last saw this, it was just uh, the, the sort of the front transmission and the rear transmission and uh, wishbones, etc., were kind of assembled. Um, and I had to put them onto the chassis, uh, build the shocks, put the wheels and tyres on. Uh, in fact, the wheels and tyres don't have to go on yet, but I did to get them out of the way. Uh, still a lot to do, which I'll explain. So as you can see there, the shocks are done, the wheels are on, and it's like a standing um, rolling chassis. Uh, there's no electrics in it just yet. So I'll go through what I've done. So the, the rear transaxle, Oh, let me just move the car around to show you a close-up of the areas I'm talking about. So that's the rear end done. Um, it is sitting high at the moment because it's, it's, there's very little on the car, to be honest. Uh, but the shocks are done at the rear. Uh, they're nice. They might be a little bit hard, but again, uh, I've got to uh, wait until it's got the weight in the car. Um, that's done. Uh, let me just turn the car around again. And that's the front end done with the shock absorber. Uh, the main difference on this one is I've put the standard uh, drive shafts that come with the kit in the front because the ones that fit the rear are too long and don't fit the front. Unless there's, they're for, I think they're, are they egress or top force? One of the two, that's, the, uh, that's what they're listed as. They do fit the hot shot, however it's only the rear. I don't know why, they, they, well I know why they don't fit the front, they're too long, but is there any upgrades that I need for the front or is it, uh, have I bought rears and I need top force front? I'll have to have a look at that um, for, the, for future, I, I can get them again. But if you know the answer, let me know. Shock absorber in the front, uh, it's slightly different to the Hot Shot, the original. Uh, it's more of a full size shock absorber there as you can see. As you're probably aware, there's different wheels and tires on this. Let me just move. Let me just move the car. So these are the upgraded wheels and tires that are recommended. Um, let me just sort of double check. These are throwing the paperwork away now for these. So the tires are the dual block tires, front and rear, and large dish wheels. Now the large dish wheels um, are white, white nylon. And I wasn't too keen on the white, if I'm honest. It suits some cars, but not others. And as you can see, uh, as at all intents and purposes, they're black. And what I used was that. So this was just purchased off eBay. It's about, I don't know how much it was now. Five pounds or seven pounds, something like that. There's still plenty in there. It's a liquid form. Um, and man, does it work. I've never seen anything work as well as what that does, <laughs> ever. Um, basically, a stainless steel pan, uh, water in there, get it to boiling point and just turn it down to a simmer. It does say 200 degrees, but I didn't measure it. I just got it just to a simmer. Um, I tipped probably um, just over a quarter of that in the pan and then put the wheels in. And literally, I sort of just put them in there for probably about 20 seconds, if that and I fished them out with a spoon, stainless steel spoon, and they were already covered. So I think if I left them in there slightly less, it, they wouldn't be as dark as what you see there. The actual color for this is graphite, um, but it doesn't matter. They're better than what I think, you know, the white wheels that come with the car. Now these, these tires, they've got foams in, front and rear, so that's all uh, good. Now, Shock absorber wise, I do mind. I enjoyed building the shocks, I didn't film them, but actually building the shocks up. A lot of uh YouTube channels and RC enthusiasts that you, you know, not everyone, but the ones that the main ones that you sort of what I look at online anyway, um, complain or incite that they 
don't like doing the shocks because they're boring. I actually find doing the shocks very therapeutic and taking my time with them to get them absolutely right. Um, and these, I know they might be a little bit stiff, they're not too bad, but what I use on here, so when you assemble the shocks, you don't have to use what I'm gonna show you here, um, but put some grease around the O-rings. Any O-rings that are in the cap or to, to help to aid with sealing, I use this. So it's just a shock O-ring grease. I, I don't even think it's specifically um, for O-rings. <laughs> I think it's a selling, a marketing thing, but it, it's a nice color. So I just I use a small amount of that and I sort of put them around the O-rings, which go in this case in the top, in, in the top of the shock absorber. It, it, on this one that I buy, it gives you a little applicator that you sort of scoop and put on, so nice and easy. Um, as far as the shock oil that I used, I used that all round. So the medium Tamiya oil. Um, that's what I use in the rear. Um, in the front, I used a combination of that, plus a very small amount of this. This is just diff oil really, or silicone oil. This is 40,000 weight. It's pretty overkill, but a very small amount. Uh, I don't know whether or not that they should be used together. It's oil at the end of the day in a sealed unit. Yeah, and I think, I think the front is will be uh, a bit stiffer because, and I might have to change that. Uh, the back, the back actually seems fine if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that's done. I mean, that's as far as I've got at the moment. Um, I've got a little aluminium body pin here. That's a sort of upgraded aluminium one rather than the rather heavy and bulky silver one. I'm hoping that fits. Uh, it does say to put an O-ring on there on the stock post. Uh, I haven't put one on this one yet. And that's about as far as I've got so far. Now, to continue with part three, I've ordered a few items, electronics. Now, I've got that on my phone. I, ordered, I mean, it comes with a motor, which I've got a different motor in it. It comes with a speed controller, um, which I haven't put in it. I'm gonna put a different one in. Um, the one in it is fine for most applications and probably okay for what I was gonna do, to be fair. Um, and it's certainly, if you build it to kit stock, then you've got absolutely no worries at all. So I've bought a, a Samwa um, receiver. Now I'm gonna put that in this car. They're quite expensive. Um, it's the one, I use it for my racing when I race my carpet racer. Uh, so it's the same as that, so it'll go straight on the transmitter. Um, but I'll, I know it's a bit more awkward on the hot shot, however, but I'm going to, I'm not going to permanently fix it in the hot shot. I'm going to use uh, Velcro stuff that I use. I'm going to Velcro it in so I can use other cars. So I don't have to keep buying these because they're, they're quite a lot of money. And I can use it on my RC Pro program instead of dragging a car out and balancing it to plug it into the computer. So I've got that. I've got a low profile Savox servo. It's only a nine kilogram servo. It's more than ample for this than what I need. Um, I bought a Maverick brushed speed controller. Um, and it's only because it's got quite high amperage and it works on 12 turns or more. I don't even know what this motor is I've got. If it's less than that, I'm a little bit buggered, but um, we'll see. I mean, the 1060 Hobby Wing speed controller is also limited to a certain amount of turns and i know for a fact that the motors that i've used that on are overrated for what the speed controller should be used uh they sometimes click off with their sort of get a little bit overloaded but for, for what i need it's fine i'm gonna anyway so it's just trying these i quite like electronics uh, anyway, it's a bit of my, it's a thing that I like, especially with RC cars, I like trying different things out. So, and it's also LiPo, you can use LiPo and normal living. So 
as I'm trying to yawn and talk. So the NIMH and the and LiPo, so that's useful as well. So they're on order, they're not here yet. So I've got to wait for them. My next job is, this is my next job. This is what's in the instructions. Um, installing that in, but more importantly, painting it. Um, in the box art, the guy stays white. The surround at the bottom's black. Um, seat belts are red and or red padding black, which they might have. There might be decals for that, I suppose, which would be useful. But I will try my best. Um, and then also the driver figure, the, the face. I want to try and get a little bit of detail on that. And I'm going to spray the helmet to make it look like a crash helmet. So in the, in the the funny thing is, box art is very similar to the wild one. And the wild one came with a chrome helmet, which I left. I left it chrome. And, and the box art is actually chrome. So it's very similar with the, the driver cantered looking one way a little bit. So I didn't do that. With the wild one, I made the driver look ahead. So. I'm going to do, and, and also I think that it's a slightly different helmet on that one, but they look the same box art wise, but they're not. So this one here needs some painting. There is some decals to go on, a sticker to go on to the chassis, I've just noticed. So my next job now is going to be to cut the bits off the spur here, off the spur tree, assemble the head, and then I'm going to sort the head out, put some detail on the head decide what I'm going to do with the driver figure, which I probably will leave in white, if I'm honest, because it, it does save a little bit of job. Paint the base. Close his gloves. White as well. It's a bit of a cop out, isn't it? I might have to put some detail on the, like, the sleeve or something. I don't know. I'm not very good at painting, so this will probably look like a whole mess. But anyway, that's the next job. That's what I'm going to get on with. Um, I'll show you as I do bits and pieces. Right, so I've done a little bit put the crash helmet together and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to I'll put some um, model filler across the seam and you know where the screw grows the screw goes behind grows I don't know sometimes I say words and other words come out so this is going to take a bit of time because you've got to rub it all down to almost nothing and then apply a bit more thinner coat of filler and do the same again. I'm trying to get rid of the seam to make it like an actual crash helmet. You won't even see it in the car, but I know it's done. Um, and the other thing is what I've done so far, a bit of painting. Again, not my most favorite bit of the modeling, I suppose, but there's the, uh, the body. So I've painted the base bit, um, it's flat black, and the steering wheel would also be uh, flat black. Now, I'm not sure whether to leave Guy white the the, um, the overalls or not? It might look better, stand out a little bit more, won't it? But I'd have to put a little bit of detail on where the clothing sort of flaps over. Now, there's some people out there like that do. <laughs> I would pay them to do it because it, it's so amazing that I'd like them to do that for me. Um, incredible! It's it's beyond. I mean, it must cost hundreds to paint. I don't know how much it costs to paint something like this, but I'd be prepared to pay it <laughs> within reason. But anyway, I'm going to attempt to do my best. Um, I suppose most people might even paint that white with white. Um, I think I'll leave that. I'll, I'll probably do the cuffs and probably put some dark bits where I can. I've got to get a really thin paintbrush, which I do have. And then we can put the steering wheel on, do the seat belts. So the seat belts, as I've said, are, are black. So the bit that actually, what I should have done is the bit that goes down from his uh, shoulder down to where the base is. And then he's got a couple of silver buckles there. But again, there might be de decals for that. So I'd probably hedge my bets on that. But anyway, that's as I'm moving around, you can't see anything. So that's, that's that. 
Um, the paint's going to dry. I'm just letting the filler to go off. Um, off him. Or her. Don't know. What do you reckon? Looks like a guy. So, yeah, that's going to be the next thing. I'm going to rub that down. I'm not going to show you me rubbing it down. I'll, I'll rub it down, add some more filler, rub it down until I'm happy with it. And then I'll show you what I'm finished with. And then we'll decide about painting the crash helmet and so on, and the, and the, and the face inside and the padding. It's not going to be super complex, I can assure you. But anyway, let me, uh, this bit's a bit long and laborious for filming, so I won't film everything. I'll, I'll, I'll recommence when I'm nearly done with the crash hat. So what I've done so far, let me just show you. Um, I haven't done the back. The back was so difficult to get that to the, the screw to sort of disappear, but you won't see that anyway because it's going to be in the car. But I've kind of filled the gap that sort of sandwiches them together. Obviously, the, the front is slightly masked, and I've put some build primer on it. I'll rub that down. It, it's not quite as good, you know. Is it, there's a slight, a slight little like lump there, like he's got a <laughs> dent on the crash on it. But you won't again. You won't see it. And I'm, I'm going to spray the helmet in a matching colour to the car, and then this will get fitted in the cab anyway. And you, you, you won't really see it. I'm going to take once the, the sort of this is dry. I'll give it a very light rub down, very light. And then I'll just take the masking off the front there and then I'll just do some, a small amount of detail on the face. And then I'll paint the rest of the body up as in the uh, driver's body because uh, I've done, this is all dry now. So that's sort of matte black. I've put some, a bit of detailing on his arms and his hands there of what I want to do. Maybe get his seatbelt, see what decals I've got for the seatbelt, glue the steering wheel on. And then basically put this in on the car chassis. Um, but I've, you know, I've got some paint coming for that. I've probably got some paint anyway. But the color I want to do, you have to wait and see. It's a bit of a, it will match the car color kind of thing, um, and it will look better than just being plain white, I guess. So anyway, that's where we're at. Um, and we're waiting for the bits to come in to sort. Of, I want to put the servo on to the steering wheel. The steering is straight. Um, electronics are kind of in the box because the bottom of the chassis needs to be bolted on so uh, yeah anyway that's what that's what I've done I'll uh, I'll show you in a bit how I get on by the way welcome to England that comes to a standstill with a slight covering of snow what a joke this country is <laughs> It's not that bad. It is cold and there is snow out there, you know, but you know, come on. It's not real, is it? <laughs> anyway, onwards and upwards. So for today, we've got the electronics uh, for this car. Um, I'll quickly show you. Uh, well, I'll show you in a minute. I've got a Savox servo. I've got a Maverick speed controller, which is, you know, huge. But it was cheap. And I've got a Samwa uh, receiver. So the next task is, as you can probably see here, I'm going to cut the servo saver off. And then I've got to mount it to the Savox servo and then central centralize the, um, the servo before I install it in the car. The, the, the hot shot as a general rule of thumb is been, is pretty poor of its electronics installation process it's not great and the uh the receiver i want to be able to use elsewhere so it's a rule using it in this car is a real ball ache if i'm honest um i should i might have to buy another one and they're like 80 pound a pop so uh because I, I, I'd like to use the uh, receivers in my other cars and most of them just sort of pop in. The, you can get them and then Velcroed in is what the plan was. And I also use the receiver on, uh, uh, what's it called? V VRC Pro. So the uh, 
radio controlled game if you like or simulation and you can use your hand controller for practice which is what I have been doing but of course if I put this in the car to get to get this out and plug it into the computer is going to be like a, a mission so yeah I should have actually I don't know I'm gonna have to get another one whatever anyway so I'm gonna get the servo sorted out put the bits on that are on this spur here and I'll be back once I've got the servo and perhaps got it all plugged in so it's, I can show you it centralised just so it works and it's sort of peace of mind. So the servo is centralised, I use the kit servo saver. I'm never a fan really of these type of servo savers um, but you know they're in every Tamiya kit that I've ever built. They just they just do the job don't they? They're not, they're not bad I mean no, they, but I, I'm, again, as far as the, the, the kit itself, I'm not too fussed about this, and I'm, I'm also not I'm not a massive fan of um, chrome plated parts. It seems to be a, a common thing on some sort of speciality kits, I guess. But you know, anyway, just personal preference. But anyway, that's done. I'm gonna try and get this bolted uh, into the car, into that little box. Um, and I'll show you when I've done that. Front servo is on, uh, well not on, <laughs> let me rephrase that. Front servo is ready to go on, just noteworthy. Um, when you're putting these standoffs off on, it depends which way around they go because you've got to measure between the, the lug and the face. And if it's more than eight mil, you have to put these on with the recess facing backwards. If it's less than 8mm between that face there and this face there, then they go the other way around because that little recess takes up the difference. Um, so it's, it's worth doing that, I guess, because if you get it on wrong, it probably won't, it'll probably rub. The track control arms will probably rub on the body somewhere. But putting these screws on in there, these are really difficult. Um, they don't screw in particularly easily. You can't hold it, it's fiddly. Um, but anyway, it's it's ready to go in the bottom box now, which is what I'm going to do, and I'll I'll crack on with that. I just thought I'd show you that, so I'll um, let you know when I've done the rest of it. I've done the uh, the under tray um, electronics. It's never the easiest, so it's all in there. I've cable tied it all down. Everything's stuck down with Velcro. Um, one of the main things, and I've done it. I did it with the other hot shot is that the on off switch is separate well it, it is anyway isn't it but it's attached to the speed controller in normal circumstances but because once this is up you can't get to the speed controller because it's a sealed unit so I've had to sort of cut away a little bit of the side there as you can prob probably see uh, and I've just put that there for now I don't know I'm just hoping it won't foul on anything once that's up, that'll be exposed. I mean, it is what it is. It's not gonna, I'm not going to run it in mud or rain anyway, so it doesn't matter. Servo went in quite nicely. Is a snug fit in there. The servo horn um, is clear just about. Um, you can see that there. <laughs> just. So, you know, maybe it could have gone a little bit further forward. Maybe, I don't know. So definitely over eight mil when it said to put them that way around so anyway um, the only other issue I've got is I run the antenna aerial here and it's only a short bit and it has like a plastic sheath that goes over it and sticks up ideally I'm going to run that to protect the coax type cable I don't it says to run it through out of the battery bit here I'm not too keen on that so I'm going to leave that at the moment um, I'm going to see where it goes through the body there. Um, I might have to just drill an extra extra hole in the sh into the chassis so that that can be incorporated. I'll, I'll have a look. But we're going to try and fit that now. So. Right, so I've just got this here. You can't, can't see a lot because I can't, I haven't got any room at the minute. Right, all the electrics are in. It's just got to be a few trim sets and things I've got to do. But it does all work. Let me try and show you. Steering, you're not going to see a lot. So the steering, that's all in. Uh, throttle. Yeah. 
So back to handheld for a second. So that's, the electrics are all in. Uh, the, I've got the motor in, it's not wired fully yet. Um, I will, don't know what I'm gonna do there yet. I might put some different wires on the motor because they're kind of swapped, you know, it just, just so happens where they've been. Well, the red goes to the black and the black goes to the red. So I might I might just change them. It's not gonna really be too difficult. I can do that in situ as well. So we can get that that done. Um, I took the center part of the chassis out. Um, there's a little cover, a little inspects, an inspection hatch, which is here. Um, I've put the antenna through there this time. So I'm gonna probably, if I put this back in, which I probably will, I'll, I'll drill a little hole in it so that it um, fits. I'll keep the antenna there. The um, the process, the antenna should just be threaded out through the wires here, to the others and sort of left, well, I don't like that because that coax cable type of thing, if it breaks, it's knackered. So I haven't fully set it all up yet, but it is all working. It is sitting a bit high, if I'm honest. Um, obviously it's got more to go on it, the battery's got to sit on it, um, the bodywork, the roll cage, and so on and so forth. So there's stuff to go on it, and the man. Um, well, not the man takes a lot of weight, does it? So that's, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, because it's gonna be quite a long video otherwise. I'm going to, that's going to be part three, uh, up to the rolling chassis. Um, and I'll continue with part four, uh, which will be more uh, assembling the, the roll cage, the bodywork, detailing, the driver figure, properly fitting all my um, bits and pieces that I need on the car and starting to build it up. So I'm hoping part four will be the, the finished product with a bit of luck. Um, yeah, it looks good. It's, it's, it's going well so far. So um, yeah, that's the end of part three of my Tamiya Hotshot 2 Blockhead Motors build. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Uh, feedback's always welcome. Um, and how I can improve, or if I'm doing what is what you like, uh, it'd be much appreciated. But anyway, thanks very much for now, and I'll see you on part four.